When most watch geeks hear the name Orient Star, this is probably the watch they're gonna think of. And with its very tall domed crystal and rather vintage-y aesthetics, some might consider it to be nothing more than a souped up Bambino. However, there's a bit more to it than that, including what some might consider to be a critical flaw. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're gonna take a look at the Champagne Orient Star Classic. Like a lot of my other Orients, I got this watch from Tuss Watches in the UK. Now, I did buy it, but because they knew I was going to review it, they did give me a healthy discount, which is why I threw up the promotional tag as just a precaution. But if you are in the market for an Orient, go check out Tuss Watches. That said, let's dive in and check out the Orient Star Classic. And we'll first start off with the specs. So the Orient Star Classic is a smaller watch compared to the Bambino. It's 38.5mm wide with a lug to lug of 445 half which means that even though the design is a touch retro, it's not quite vintage small. Rather, it's right in line with a lot of other modern sized dress watches. It is, however, a tad tall at just over 13 millimeters, which really isn't that bad for an automatic, but it is a bit tall for a dress watch, and surprisingly even taller than the Bambinos. Some of this is due to the exhibition case spec, but a lot of that is in the crystal, and I'd say that at least two millimeters of that is just from the crystal. So depending on what you are wearing, this could be an issue, but overall I think it's still going to be manageable for most. Now, rounding out the specs, you also have 50 meters of water resistance, the Orient Caliber 40N52 movement, and I'm very happy to report a standard 20mm lug width, as opposed to the occasional 21mm you find on some Orients. So no short bus straps for this one. The case design is one aspect that this has in common with the Mambino as it's very minimalistic in terms of details, acting more like a rounded frame for the crystal and the curvy dial underneath. The case is also one that loves to play with the light, as well as collect quite a few fingerprints, as every inch of this case has a mirror-like polish, from the narrow sidewalls to the thin stubby lugs that come out, as well as the clean bezel and exhibition case back on the rear. It's basically one giant mirror where you can also get a glimpse of the movement, and overall I think it looks pretty good for what it is. I have seen some better movements, but this is a definite improvement over your standard Seiko NH35A. Now back to the front and at the right, you have a signed crown, which is a little smaller and does have simple knurling, but I think it looks good proportionally to the rest of the case. It's also fairly easy to wind and pop out when you need to set the time. And if you didn't catch it already, you also have drilled lugs on the case, which you might wind up needing sooner than later, but we'll get to that. Now, what you really want to know about is the dial, which is drop-dead gorgeous. There are a number of different colorways for the Orient Star Classic, and they all look good, but I don't remember seeing a lot on the champagne version, so I ordered one just to be a little different. And I'm honestly glad I did. This thing is stunning. The dial itself has this light champagne coloring to it, and a very subtle sunburst effect, which gives the dial an almost satin sheen to it. There's also a slight curve to the dial as it goes out to the outer edge, which is kind of a retro touch, and something it shares in common with the Bambinos as well as the Timec Marlin reissues. Now, with this particular colorway, the champagne dial has gold accents, which surprisingly has a lot of contrast, and is easy to use. The gold wedges that act as hour indicators are rather thin and sit right on top of the dial, and even conforming to the curvature as it goes to the outer edge. The indices aren't very tall, but they reflect the light easily, which always makes them stand out. And sitting in between the indices on that curved edge are very fine black hashes for minute indicators, creating a very subtle chapter ring. Now, a lot of people prefer clean, simple dress watches, so I might be in the minority here, but I do like a dress watch with a rather well-defined chapter ring. It just makes reading it and setting the watch so much easier. Then at the three o'clock position, we have a date window. And this is probably my only real complaint with the dial, or rather maybe nitpick, as there's nothing really wrong with it. It's just that I don't think it's as done as well as the rest of the dial, and not quite as defined. Now, just above the six, you have the Orient Star logo and name. And that's there because just under the 12, you have one thing that makes this watch rather special. And that's the power reserve indicator. At this point, most Orient Stars come with one. It's basically become their signature feature. But outside of Orient, it's not something you usually see at this price. 
For some, that power meter is unnecessary clutter, but personally, I love it. It not only adds some more visually interesting elements to the dial, but I think it's fairly useful, and especially if you're frequently switching watches, as it lets you know if you need to wind it before heading to bed. Now, topping everything off, you have a set of Dafine hands, which isn't too surprising for a dress watch. But Orient did something fantastic here, and it's the same thing Seiko does with the Cocktail Time series, where each hand is split into two, with one side brushed and one side polished. Which probably doesn't sound like a big deal, but believe me, it makes a huge difference, and this is something everyone should do with Dafine hands. In lower lit conditions, most Dafine hands are hard to see. Basically, they just reflect the light, and if there's no light, it just reflects darkness. And believe me, this has been a pain in the ass when trying to photograph some of these watches. But when you split it in half like they've done here, at least one half of those hands is always easy to make out. Now, just so you don't think I'm completely crazy, here's my Bambina with regular Dafine hands. And just compare that to what Orient Star has done. Not only does this add more contrast, but I think it makes them much more well-defined, adding just a nice crisp outline that looks beautiful against the dial. So overall, the watch is drop-dead gorgeous. I don't think there's any question there. It's a little more complex than some dress watches, but I think it's still very clean and easy to read. And all with a little bit of a vintage aesthetic, which is enhanced even more with that domed crystal. Now, most of the time that domed crystal is beautifully clear, but I don't think there's a whole lot of AR coating on it. So at some times, in certain lighting conditions, there is a bit of glare. And maybe that's not really surprising, as this dial is a bit reflective. So just bear that in mind, but overall it is gorgeous. However, remember that critical flaw I mentioned earlier? Well, there's a reason I waited until now to talk more about the crystal. While the domed crystal is essential to design, it's also the watch's biggest weakness, and potentially a critical flaw, as it's mineral crystal and not sapphire like you might expect. Which, on a lower priced watch like say the Bambino, I can completely understand, and even forgive, as a high dome or box cut sapphire can be pretty pricey. But on this? No way. This is an Orient Star. Orient Stars are supposed to represent the best that Orient can do, and I know they can do better than this. Heck, I've seen it. So for a lot of you, this is going to be a massive negative. But the only reason I said that this is a potential critical flaw is because prices on these fluctuate wildly. At full retail, I think this is way out of line. But sometimes these can be had for a pretty good price, and at that point, it may be worth it, as it is gorgeous. Which is kind of the same argument I think people have when they're talking cocktail time from Seiko, as those are gorgeous in their own right, and they also don't have sapphire. Now, moving on to the movement, we have an Orient Caliber 40N52, which, to be honest, I don't know a whole lot about, and I couldn't find a whole lot about these online either. So if I have to speculate, I'd guess that these are a little bit better than the regular Orient movements without a power reserve. And I'd also guess that these are a little bit older, as most of the newer Orient stars, like say my outdoor or standard, have an F6 N43 movement with a 50 hour power reserve. So maybe this is one that they're phasing out, I'm not sure. Now, as for the strap, it, it kinda is what it is here, which is just okay. I think it's better leather than what comes on the Bambinos, but it still looks and feels like the straps that come on the Bambinos, and that's not necessarily a good thing. The one saving grace, sort of, is the buckle, which isn't really saying a lot, but I do like the way this one looks. So personally, I would swap the strap almost immediately, but I'd also move over the buckle, especially because the stock strap is really stiff. So if you do decide to wear it with that, just know that it's not going to be comfortable at first. It's going to take a while for this sucker to break in. However, once it does, or if you just swap it to something better, it's extremely comfortable on the wrist. The minimal case design translates into a very small footprint on the back of your wrist. So it's lightweight, comfortable, and airy. It is still tall, but as beautifully clear as that crystal is, it's not something you really notice when you're looking at it. You're more focused on the gorgeous dial and the handset underneath the crystal. But it is something you should be thinking about, as you do need to be careful with that crystal. Value is always a tricky topic when you're talking Orient Star, just because the prices seem to fluctuate so much more wildly than any other brand. So at any given point in time, it's kind of hard to tell you what to expect. 
I'm not really sure what the MSRP here is, but I've seen these start in the low threes and go all the way up to the high fives. So if you're concerned about value, which I think everyone should be, I think the best thing to do is to look at what prices you can find these at and then compare that to what you can find a corresponding Seiko cocktail time, or maybe even a Timex Marlin automatic, as I think those are going to be this watch's closest competition. They're slightly different sizes and designs, but they all have a similar vintage aesthetic with a very tall domed crystal that isn't sapphire. And I think Orient's strength here is going to be in its build quality, as well as maybe a slightly better movement. Now, the Orient Star Classic is a gorgeous watch. I don't think there's any question here. And personally, I think they do need to ditch that mineral crystal and either go full vintage with polymer or just fully embrace sapphire, even if that means a higher cost. Because right now with this mineral crystal, it's kind of in no man's land that nobody really likes. But unfortunately, that's just not what we have here. So it kind of is what it is. But the bottom line is that if you like the retro styling, or maybe if you're a big Bambino fan, and you always wished it was a little bit smaller or maybe a little nicer, then at the right price, these Orient Star Classics can be worth it. But again, at the right price. However, if you can't quite get over the mineral crystal, and I don't really blame you if you can't, then I think another option, and honestly a better option, would be the Orient Star Standard, as they're not much more. Now, this doesn't quite have the retro appeal that the Classic does, but I absolutely love this watch, and it's a watch that I would easily recommend to anyone. If you haven't seen the review, then check it out, because I think this is a watch that really shows you what Orient Star can do. It has a fantastic finishing with a beautiful dial, as well as a good bracelet and an in-house movement with a 50-hour power reserve, plus sapphire crystal, and all of this at a relatively reasonable price. The dial is a bit more busy and complex, but I think it's a great alternative to the now-dead Sarb 033. But back to the Orient Star Classic. I mean, what do you think about it? Is that mineral crystal enough to keep you at arm's length? Let me know down below. Or if you can think of another dress watch with a similar appeal that does it better, let me know that as well. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. See you next time.